toes and fingers. Those black marks are burns from the saline solution. This is baby choice. This is what Barack Obama stands for. And if we vote for him, then we share in the guilt of innocent blood. Now I'm going to say something pretty hard hitting right here, but it's the truth. Any preacher worth his or her weight in salt will preach against the killing of innocent children, will preach against this crime against God and man. But there's many of you watching me right now. You're afraid. You're afraid of the IRS. You don't have the guts to just say the clear word of God because either you're afraid of what the IRS will do or you're afraid that you'll offend somebody in your church and maybe they'll leave and they won't give their tithe anymore. In other words, I ask you this question. What are you putting first, the word of the Lord or money? Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and money. You were not called into the ministry to be a hireling. Hirelings get paid money. You weren't called into the ministry to be a hireling. You were called into the ministry to be a true servant of God. Now you think about your heroes in the scriptures. Think about the book of Acts. The book of Acts, every time the apostles started preaching, they had the authorities screaming at him, yelling at him, beating him, throwing him into jail, even killing some of them, and ultimately killing all of the early apostles except for John. So for those of you who say, I want a book of Acts church, well, you need book of Acts courage. You need book of Acts clarity when you preach. Well, the government said we can't do this and we have to obey the law. No, 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 no. The apostles, when they were told to not preach, they said, whether it is right in the sight of God to obey you rather than God, you be the judge. In another place, he said, we must obey God rather than men. And when human life is on the line, as with the Hebrew midwives in the book of Exodus, who broke the law, or Rahab the harlot, who saved the Jewish spies and broke the law. When human life is on the line, no, you do not obey a godless or unjust government. You preach the word of God. So here's my challenge to you. Are you going to be like your heroes? We love the stories in the Bible, but put yourself in their shoes. Elijah preached against Ahab and Jezebel. Preached to Ahab's face. Well, you've got some politicians like Ahab and Jezebel on the horizon. Are you going to take the principles of Elijah and apply them today to today? Or are you just going to look the other way and pretend it doesn't really apply? John the Baptist preached to Herod, preached against Herod. Jeremiah preached in the days of Josiah and Jehoiakim. Moses preached to Pharaoh. Let my people go. They preach for justice. They preach the word of God. You have got a congregation of people that are looking to you. You perhaps have a radio ministry, a TV ministry, a, an internet ministry. Do you have the courage to just preach the word of God and say you cannot murder and not fall into the trap? Well, we're not just a one-issue voter. Take that logic. Just picture somebody standing up saying, I agree with you on the war in Iraq. I agree with you on education. I agree with you on health care. I will fight to lower your taxes. I'll fight for the things that matter to you. And most of all, I will fight to bring back the white man's right to own. Yes, you white people should be able to own black slaves. And then you'd be sitting there going, oh my gosh, I can't believe he said that. Would you say, sorry, buddy, I can't vote for you over that one issue? Of course you would. You wouldn't betray everything you hold dear because you agreed with a politician on other things if he said we should have the right to own another human being. Well then for the love of God and all that is true, how can you say that you would vote for somebody who supports the murder of innocent children? I mean, which is worse, murder or slavery? At least a slave can get free. A murdered baby cannot get undead. So be bold, be courageous. Follow the example of those 33 evangelical Protestant preachers, pastors in 22 different states who are right now being, uh, they, they've got the Alliance Defense Fund saying, we'll stand with you, don't worry, who have said to the IRS, we are preachers in Christ's church. We are not going to let the government tell us whether or not we can speak about morals and about politicians and about the commandments of God himself. 
They've got guts. Follow their example. Follow their example. Hold a press conference. Get together with some of your evangelical brethren in the waning days of this of this election. Have a press conference and say, no Christian can ethically vote for Obama because of his support of child killing. Now in closing, those of you who are evangelical brothers and sisters, but you are not in full-time ministry, we've created a flyer. It's called, Is It Immoral to Vote for Obama for President? We've also created one for Roman Catholics called Faithful Catholic Citizenship. I'm asking you as a mission to take the last Sunday before the election, or maybe two Sundays before the election, and get five or 10,000 copies of this and go from church to church, just going on the doors of the cars in the parking lot and putting, go to every evangelical church, go to Walmart, go to the mall, and just distribute this flyer. Is it immoral to vote for Obama? And if you've got a Catholic church in the area, you can put the Catholic one on their car doors because the same crisis is happening in the Catholic church with people that are prepared to betray their Catholic faith and support Obama. We are desperate in this hour for courage and clarity and men and women who will rise to the level of John the Baptist, of Deborah the prophetess, of, of great apostles who preach the word of God fearlessly even at the risk of their lives. I mean, please, you're not going to be killed. You're not going to be martyred. I mean, what's going to happen to you if you really lift up your voice? So what if you lose a few people? So what if you get a little bad press? That's the stuff that heroes of the faith are made of. And someday, someday, when you leave this life, you are going to talk after you're dead. Remember the, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11? Where it says, Abel being dead, yet speaks. Someday all of us are going to end up in a graveyard. But when we're gone from this life, we're still going to say something. We're still going to speak. And what will we say? And if Obama wins this election, and your children and your grandchildren, and maybe even your great-grandchildren ask you, what did you do to stop him? Are you going to hang your head? Or are you going to say, I preached like a house on fire? Are you going to look down in shame? Are you, is your life going to testify after you're gone that you really didn't say or do much to stop the election of the most hardcore supporter of child killing that ever ran for the White House? Are you going to have to look away because a man like Obama who supports infanticide, infanticide, killing a baby after it survived an abortion, he voted to allow babies to die if they survive the abortion. Are you going to sit by while that happens? Or are you going to stand and be counted for Christ? Stand and be counted for the laws of God. And remember, Jesus said, What you did to the least of these, my brethren, you did to me. In the Hebrew word for a baby and an unborn baby, same word, ben. The Greek word for a baby unborn or a baby newborn, same Greek word, brephos. In the mind of God, a baby is a baby is a baby. Doesn't matter if it's Elizabeth with John the Baptist leaping for joy and when Jesus and Mary come into the room. Doesn't matter if the baby's six months old. These are babies made in the image of God and to kill them is murder. Preach the word of God. Use these passages of the Bible. Be bold, be courageous, and raise up an army in the last days of this election so that one of the most sinister, diabolical men to ever run for office is defeated. Thank you for this time. I beg you for your prayers. Be bold, be good, be just, and God will reward you for your courage and your valor. God bless you.